Hi, this is Raven Blair Davis, and I've teamed up with Michael Sinoff's HardToFindSeminars.com. Hi, John. I'm excited to have you here. But i got to ask you, because I've been listening to some of your interviews, and I guess I've been plugged into the new John, that I didn't know that you were at the age of 16, a street kid, getting into trouble, selling drugs. Oh, I got into so much trouble as a kid. I was on the wrong train, going in the wrong direction, and picking up speed. Wow. Well, what was the deciding factor in saying enough is enough? Well, you know, I grew up in a loving, caring home where I knew right from wrong, and I wanted more in my life. But I guess there was this mindset that I had that if I wanted more, I had to either take it from somebody or steal it from somebody, and that I wasn't smart enough or good enough to learn how to earn it. And so I had a challenge with my self-image, telling myself stories now that I look back, that in order for me to have more, you had to have less. And I didn't know anything about myself. I didn't know anything about the universe. I didn't know anything about the law of attraction or about learning, you know, new skills and becoming more in order to have more. And I was really blessed when I was 19, I met some individuals who started to teach me, to show me that there is a better way, there is an actual easier way that you feel better about yourself and that you really can achieve whatever it is you choose to achieve if and when you change from the inside out. I just became fascinated with that. Well, you were smart to have that wake-up call and to want much more of your life. And so what would you tell the person that's listening right now that said, wow, I'm dealing with a teenager like that or, you know, his friends or her friends is like that. What would you say to them to get them on the right track if they have a loved one or a child or grandchild that's kind of in that path or at least hanging around people like that, John? Well, you really can't say anything to them. And this is one of the discussions I have with parents all the time is think about when you were 13, 14, 15, 17. Did you want to listen to your parents? And one of the things that we have to understand is asking ourselves different questions will give us better answers. And here's the question. Why is my child, nephew, niece, whatever the case is, behaving this way? And you remember the old saying that birds of a feather flock together? The reason is because of their self-image. So guys or gals, we do what we do, we say what we say because of our own self-image. And our own perception equals our projection. So when we have this self-image of ourselves that we're either good enough or not, smart enough or not, too white or too black or too Asian, whatever the case might be, whatever we have these beliefs, those beliefs about ourselves, whether they're true or not or irrelevant, will dictate our behaviors. It'll dictate who we hang around. It'll dictate what we think. It'll dictate what we do. And so as opposed to telling a kid or an adult, you can do better. You're smarter than that. You shouldn't hang around with those kids. They're like, yeah, blah, 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 blah. And so the question is, okay, so if I'm not supposed to do that, what should I do? And the answer is show them a different environment. And answer is show them a movie, a book, a rapper. And I don't mean a rapper like a candy rapper. I mean like people that they idol that broke free from what they were doing before. Show them that there's hope. Show them a different way. Don't tell them. They don't want to be compared. I don't want to be compared. You don't want to be compared. And so we have to understand that it's not that they're not doing the best they can. They are based on what they believe to be true about themselves. And their beliefs of what is true about themselves may not be accurate, but they're still their truth. And we will always act out and always project what we believe at a subconscious level to be true about ourselves and what's possible for us. And the reason I say this is when I was younger, I had individuals who cared about me that showed me. And not only did they show me, but then they taught me. That was the difference. And it's not enough. If you can have a child says, you know what, yeah, I want help. See, but it's virtually impossible to help a child or an adult that needs help that doesn't want it. Information is wonderful, but information on its own is really a waste of time. And it's not intentional. You know, when we were in school, you know, when they gave us new information, they drilled it into us through practice, drill, and rehearse, practice, drill, and rehearse, practice, drill, and more rehearse. And then, you know, we memorized it and became part of who we are. Well, guess what? When you're, you know, let's say in business or you want to start a new career or start a business, 
Well, there's so much new stuff to learn, and we don't learn based on reading a book or a paragraph one time. If you think about a Hollywood actor or actress, when he or she is given a new script, they have to learn that script thousands upon thousands of times, hundreds if not thousands of hours of practice and rehearsing, until it becomes a part of them where they can act the play or the role. Well, guess what? If you are in business or you are looking for some new results in your life that encompass having to learn new things, the same rule applies. You have to somehow make that new information a part of who you are so that then you don't have to think about play. See, you're never going to see an actor or actress on the screen who is practicing their role. They are it. And in becoming the role, they are able to express all of the emotions of the role so that we could sit there and look at them and cry or laugh or gasp. Well, guess what? We have to learn how to become so congruent with the new level of success we want to achieve that that, through repetition of thought, repetition of visualization, repetition of behaving that way, faking it till you make it, it becomes the new you or even fake it till you make it. After I was in the movie The Secret, a lot of people really didn't understand The Secret, thought it was hokey pokey and that there wasn't any science behind it and that it was foo-foo esoterical stuff. And I've been very fascinated with science, and I want to know the answers to things. So I'm not just okay with this. For example, somebody says, you should visualize your success every day. I want to know why. I want to know, well, how does it work? How to do it specifically? How long does it take? I want to understand when somebody says visualize how it works and why. I want to know when somebody says use the law of attraction, have a positive attitude, and you'll attract positive things in your life. But how do you imagine that? Where do you get the fact that, that works? So I did all the research for the last nine years, and I want to share that research. But not only did I do the research, I've been in the world of business development and growth, building my own companies, for 29 years also been in the personal development growth, and I wanted to marry the best of what I've learned about building companies so that people can really have that American dream. You know, if you can earn the amount of income you want to earn and have a business for yourself, then guess what? You're feeling great. You can do the things you want to do. You can buy the home and the retirement and the kids' lifestyle and the charity that you want to contribute to. I think that everybody deserves that right. But it's also for people who do the right things in the right order. And building a business is complex. It's not just, you know, doing it in your pajamas every day on the weekends. You can make some money doing it in your pajamas every day on the weekends. But you have to do the right things in your pajamas every day on the weekends. So the question is, where are you going to learn to do those right things? And I wanted to be part of the solution, and my goal is to help millions of business owners around the world achieve financial freedom by learning the right things and then by making sure that they apply the things that they learn. And so I wrote the book with my dear friend, Murray Smith, and then we started a company that helps small business owners learn what they need to learn and keeps them accountable to doing what they should be doing. When you think about information, right now, whoever is listening, they can stop right now. They can go onto Google. They can type in any question they want, and in the next one minute, they can have 100,000 answers for that question. But that's not enough. The question that I always ask people is not about the information, but what is it about? And the key for all highly successful people is application of the right information. So we don't just give people the right information, but we created a process and a system to keep people accountable to actually doing what they should be doing, taking day-to-day -day action, week-by-week -week action, the right type of action, and giving them the support that they need to be able to consistently move from one level to the next. So maybe from startup to their first 50,000, from 50,000 to the next, you know, 50,000 to 100, and then to 200, 500, and a million. And in doing that, we've created an environment where business owners can thrive and get from one level of success to the next and not do it alone. Now, that was really one of the other keys is you've got to do it by yourself, but you can't do it alone. I mean, if you think about why do most people go on diets or have New Year's resolutions within a week or two or three, even though it's something they really, 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 really wanted, they stop. It's not because they don't want to succeed. They're just conditioned to a certain way of thinking and behavior, and they need a different process and a system to keep them accountable to new thoughts and new behaviors, and that's why we do what we do. 
Hi, this is Raven Blair Davis interviewing for Michael Sinall's Hard to Find Seminars.com. You should visualize your success. First of all, how do you do that, John? And then what happens if we don't? Well, if we understand why do we want to visualize, there's a part of the brain that doesn't know the difference between something that you imagine and something that's real. And that's the subconscious part of the brain. And why is that important? Well, we know that the subconscious mind is responsible for 96 to 98 percent of our behaviors. So if we want to alter our behaviors, we can't alter our behaviors long term if we are not conditioned at the subconscious level to behave and think a certain way or a different way. And so part of the brain is responsible for choosing the goals or the dreams that you have, but it's not the part of the brain that's responsible for taking action. And so that's number one. So think about your brain like software and a computer. And once there's a program or a software program, it does what the program stipulates. If you want a different result, it's not enough to just say, I want a different result. You have to change the software inside the brain just like you would in the computer. Visualization is one of the ways to access the software of the brain. And a simple way to visualize, number one, is to write down, for example, exactly what it is that you want. So a new vision for your business. So it would go something like this. I'm so grateful for the fact that my business is now generating $100,000 a year and that clients are loving my product or service and referring their friends to me consistently. So what you do is you create like a little script like you would a Hollywood movie, but you write it in a positive and as if it's already happened perspective. So you don't do it in the past or in the future. You do it as if it's true and real right now. And then you take that written document and you visualize it every morning when you wake up for three or four minutes as if it was real. Then you visualize it again just before you go to bed as if it was real. And why do we say before bed and when you just wake up? Well, that's when the part of the brain that's a little bit tired, that filter, is set aside and your brain is much more receptive to changing the software. Okay? And when we visualize, we can either read and feel it, or once you've done it a few times, now you want to close your eyes, and now you want to make believe, just like you did when you were a kid. You pretend that that story is you, and that's your life, and that's the amount of money that's coming in, and the amount of money that you're giving to charities, and the things you're doing to help other people, your family, your friends, what is your retirement like, how much money is coming in, what are you doing with it, how are you walking, how are you talking, and what you do in this is you are actually creating a new pattern in the brain. You're creating a new software pattern in the brain that through repetition, it becomes part of your fixed psyche or brain. Once it becomes part of this fixed side of yourself, your brain automatically takes it over, no differently than the fact that you don't have to think for a second about putting on makeup. You don't have to, if you've been trained, think for a second about getting dressed or brushing your teeth or driving a stick shift. But at one point in your life, you did have to think about it. It did take coordinating your thoughts and your actions. But through repetition, you were able to convert those thoughts and those actions into an automatic pattern. Hi, it's Michael Sinoff with HardToFindSeminars.com. Thanks for watching this video. You know, many of my interviews last 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour, sometimes even up to two and a half hours long. They're actual mini-seminars, and you've just listened to a short sample of just one of over 117 hours of exciting, hard-hitting, mind-blowing interviews on how to make money in direct mail, advertising, copywriting. I assure you, there is not a resource anywhere Anywhere on the internet or on the planet that comes close to the free information I provide at hardtofindseminars.com. So go right now to hardtofindseminars.com and you'll have free access to 117 hours of audio interviews with typed word for word downloadable transcripts and downloadable MP3 files. Please browse some more of the videos or go right directly to hardtofindseminars.com. Thanks for watching.